I got fired from my old job at the bank. An old lady asked me to check her balance, so I pushed her over. Hey kids, Adam here. Today I'm going to go over how I process vocals in a mix. I've done a number of uh, vocal tricks and tips and things, and in fact, I created a playlist that I'll put up here, uh, card two, and, uh, but I haven't really gone through like end to end how I process vocals in a regular video like this. I've done it in a couple of live streams and a couple of breakdowns over the time, but uh, haven't done one in just a regular video. So here it is. I'm going to go over the essentials of vocal processing, which is EQ, compression, saturation, and then effects, uh, reverbs or delays. There's really only those four key pieces and everything else you do is part of one of those. Let's, uh, let's head over to Reaper and we'll go over a project and show you what I'm doing. All right, here we are in Reaper. Now I'm assuming that you already have gone through this video or something like it to edit your vocals and prepare them for mixing. There's a lot that needs to be done before you go through this process. Take out breaths, take out uh, extra over the top uh, consonants, volume kind of match everything, gain stage everything, all that stuff. And now you're actually in the mix. You have all your instruments mixed. You're laying vocals on top of it. That's where I'm assuming we're starting from. All right, so let me play you a little bit of the mix uh, it, with vocals that are not processed at all. They aren't going to really stick out. They're not going to really work well. But here's what we have to deal with here. All right, so they're not loud enough. They don't stick out at all. They're muddy. They just don't sound great. Let me solo those out for you and you can hear what I'm talking about. Estranged from my thoughts again, oh no. They're very dry. Um, they're recorded well. They're just not as good as it could be. I start with the main vocal folder. And I'll just put a high pass filter there and usually write it 100 hertz. Uh, I'm using re EQ here. You can use re EQ. You can use anything for this. Uh, so I will enable that. And let me show you why I do that. Because when I'm editing vocals, and I went through this in the editing vocal video, you can pick up a lot of stuff like kicking the mic, you know, tapping your foot, actually tapping the microphone, plosives, things like that. Listen to this part in the chorus here without the high pass filter. Uh, listen to the word B. Everything will be all right. And you'll need some kind of bass, either headphones or monitors. It probably won't come through on like a, a cell phone or something. Listen to it again. Everything will be all right. Do you hear the, p the you know, thump? Uh, let me turn on the high pass filter and now listen. Everything will be all right. It's mostly gone. So I do that on just my main vocal folder here, and you can see I have different sub-levels. Uh, just get that out of the way. On Dylan's track itself, I do his regular EQ, and I do another high-pass filter. And this one I do a little bit as, as far up as I can get without having it sound bad. So I'll kind of sweep around, and right when it starts to sound like it's being too thin, I'll take it out. And let me, uh, let me show you that real quick on how I do that. Everything will be all right. 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 And right about there, I'm okay with taking a little bit of low end and a little bit of bass out because the vocals really stand over the mix in their mids and their highs. Next thing I do is I look for a frequency that has that kind of chest, wolfy, woofy uh, kind of sound. So here I have, it was about 280 hertz. Let me sweep around, I'll show you. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be... Up. And I'll cut around 3 dB out of that uh, just to get that, like, chest voice out of there. And then I'll do a high bump. And I'll do this one of two ways. 
On Dylan's voice, I found a an actual band EQ will be better. On some, I'll do a high shelf. But for the most part, I'm doing bands just to get this. This happened to be like three and a half K or so. So I'll turn that off and turn it on. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Just kind of opens it up and makes it a little more airy. Now I do another thing on his vocals. Uh, I'll put a card up to hear the vocal air trick that really makes your vocals cut through. In that video, I talked about this Lufticus plugin, and I was going to mess with it for some uh, future mixes, and this was one of the future mixes. Instead of doing all the sends, I just found this didn't need as much, so I put this high band at 20k, gave it about 3 dB, and we'll do it before and after. Everything will be all right. 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 All right, from there we go on to compression. I'm using a double stack compression method. I use the LA2A and the 1176. Uh, start with the LA2A. What I'm looking for, and, and actually, let me back up a second here. If you're using these two compressors or a similar method of this, what you want to do is you want to put whichever one first depends on the style of singer. If you have a singer that's more staccato, uh, maybe more rap or more, um, what's that guy's name? The acoustic guy says a million words, uh, 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 Jason Mraz, something like that. You'll want to do the 1176 first because it's much faster and it's better at clamping down on things. Uh, on there, I use a 12 to 1 ratio. Uh, attack and release all the way up, which is in the 1176 is kind of backwards, so it's actually the fastest. And then um, go between three or aim around three to five dB of gain reduction because you're really grabbing those peaks. And then on your LA2A, you that's where you really dial in your main compression. For Dylan singing, he's more of a kind of crooner, Dave Bowie, Jim Morrison. Um, Frank Sinatra ish, and I use that ish very ishy, ishily. Ishily, I think, is what it is. So, what I do is I grab the LA2A first, and then I use the 76 to back it up and grab anything that comes out. So, take a look at just the 1176 here. I'm aiming for that 3 to 5 dB gain reduction, but you'll see the needle goes way over because their sections are a little louder than others. Estranged. From my thoughts again, oh no, it's strange. So we're getting in there, it's getting a nice even performance, and then the 1176 just balances it out, and you'll watch the meter here. This is sitting right around three, spiking to five, every once in a while. It's strange. From my thoughts again, oh no. It's strange, so let go. So that's the main compression on the track. Uh, we'll get into some parallel compression after this. The last thing I do is uh, some DSing, and I love the wave sibilance. It has a look ahead feature, and I don't even start with a preset. I kind of just mess around with it. It has this monitor button where you can listen to the stuff it's taking out. And uh, let's just play with this on. It's strange from my thoughts again. Oh no. Uh, after that, what I do is I have a parallel vocal track. Uh, that is the send over here. I put the 1176 on and I put just uh, this uh, all button. So in the old days of the physical 1176, you could hit all four buttons in. It'll give you this kind of crazy compression. And then I do an EQ on it. Uh, just to get rid of some of the low end rumble, high pass filter 165, and then some high end, a little bit low pass filter around 10k. So solo out the parallel vocal track, and we'll see what this is doing. Estranged from my thoughts again. Oh no! You'll notice it's just crushing it. Uh, we're getting over 20 dB of gain reduction. It sounds just kind of awful by itself. But if you mix it in with the lead vocal. You get something that sounds like this. Estranged 
from my thoughts again, no. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. So you really get that vocal to open up. It's now able to sit on top of the music. We'll get into, into the mix in a second, but it's really clear. And there, there is some volume being added, actually quite a bit of volume being added, but there's just the overall clarity what you get with that, those multiple levels of compression. The next thing I do is I give it a reverb and delays. So my main go-to delay is a slap delay. And at some point I'll go through all of my sends and reverbs and things. Um, what I'm using for this slap delay is just rear delay. And I'm using a, just kind of a default stock vocal slapback setting. Um, let me play just the vocal with the delay on it. Everything will be all right. Let's still out the delay. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Let go and love. And what I'm doing is I have this delay on. I put an EQ and I do basically the same thing I do for all my reverbs and delays and effects. I do a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So high pass filter here is at 185. Low pass is at a little over 4K. And then I wanted this to be, I wanted this to jump out more. So I put the uh, JS MDA pseudo stereo plugin on. I put 100% width and I just, I actually just left it to the defaults. I just put the width all the way up to 100. And, you know, without that, it's um, everything will be all right. very mono. And with it, it just spreads it out. Everything will be all right. And I just like the sound of that better. So I put that set and I put it pretty high. It's negative five dB. And then I add it to my long reverb. And that long reverb makes it sound like this. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. And I call long reverb because of the tails. You could hear the, in fact, you can still hear it a little bit, or at least I can, uh, in the recording there. Uh, I just like the way that echoey, uh, this is more of a, um, especially in the beginning, more of an like ethereal part. And I want that, those vocals to kind of just echo and, and reverberate there. On the master vocal then, I have a channel called Vox Saturation where I'm using the Abbey Road Saturator at kind of a, a default, not very aggressive setting. And what that will do is just add in some, uh, some presence, uh, a little bit of more clarification and definition. I'll play it off and I'll play it on here. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Let go and love. It just opens it up a little, just that little bit more. And I don't have it. I don't have the send is very low. It's a negative 12 dB, but I will put that on my vocal track for everything and just let everything go through there. And then the last thing I do for reverbs is I put it through my short reverb and I do that on all vocals. And that kind of helps glue it together because all my instruments are through my short reverb. So with that on. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. And let's listen to it in the mix. I'll go back to this first verse here. It's strange from my thoughts again. No, oh, no. It's strange. So let go. So that's it. What I do for vocal processing. I want to show you one different thing that I do on a lead. I'll go to a different project here. Uh, you guys have heard this one probably entirely too many times now, uh, but this is under the moonlight. Now what I wanna do here is I wanna get a different effect on the vocal. So instead of the slap, I, I press everything else exactly the same, except for instead of using the slap back delay, I'll use a long delay that's on a quarter note or even an eighth note. Let's sell out a section of vocal here. You could just the lead vocal. On the mountain top, sitting pretty. And let me just play the delayed vocal. On the mountain top, sitting pretty. 
And this one I'm using H delay by waves. I put it on a quarter note and I time sync it to the project. Uh, pretty kind of a generic preset other than that. I play around with things a little in there, but I don't do too much with it. This one has a high pass and a low pass. So I don't have to put an EQ on it. Otherwise, if it didn't, uh, and fit, you can use re-delay just fine. Just put a high pass and low pass to make it more of a, almost that telephone effect. And uh, I'll put a EQ up here for the telephone effect vocal. Let's listen to this one in the mix. It gives it a completely different sound. On the mountain top, sitting pretty. So you would think based on how much you hear, like after I stopped playing that, how much echoes and, and things like that, that will really affect the music. It really doesn't, uh, partly because it's time aligned and just partly because it gives that cool effect over. It almost helps bring it out more. Uh, I'll, depending on the song, I'll go back and forth between a delay and a, or the, the longer delay and the slap back. It just really depends. I don't want to do like a long delay on a slower song because that'll just sound goofy. Uh, but especially a song like this that drives and has that kind of thumping kick. Uh, I like the long delay better than the slap in this. All right, so that's it. That's how I process my vocals. I hear this question all the time. I see it in all the groups. Hopefully this will help. And uh, you can process your vocals knowing, you know, having a plan going in, having a routine that you use frequently uh, of how to attack vocals. If you like this video, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you process vocals. Let me know if you're struggling. Let me know if this helps. Uh, meanwhile, uh, click the like button, hit subscribe, hit the little bell thing, and everything will be all right. Have an amazing week. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Let go and love. So I'll solo out just the parallel vocal track. And you can hear what this is doing. Maybe I won't. It has what plants crave. <laughs>